Welcome to On tonight's Clubhouse Live, we didn't chase him away. Josiah DeGuara is back. And hanging out with Josiah is one of Packers' rookies. It's tight end Tucker Craft. Plus, we'll look back on that Lions game. Yeah, we have to. And we'll mix football with fun like always. Plus, don't sleep on our Clubhouse Live Challenge. We have a new game for the guys. It's time to get started. Hey, Josiah. Hey, Tucker. Come on in. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's another Monday night. Welcome back to the Fox Club. We're at Neuroscience Group Field here at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute, Wisconsin. This is the home of the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. It's also the home to Clubhouse Live. I'm Brett Christofferson with USA Today Network Wisconsin and the Post Crescent. How's everybody doing on this fine Monday evening here in Northeast Wisconsin? Like summertime out there. It says October, but it feels like July. Love it. Hope we can keep this going. Hey, before we get to start, we got a lot to get to. We got a big jam packed show. We got a fun show. But we have to give it up to the High Fivers, our tunnel creators. Check out who's here tonight. It is members of the defending WIAA Division II state championship team. The Xavier Girls Volleyball squad is here. Top ranked Xavier Volleyball. And they brought the trophy, too. So they will be our team of the week that uh, we will announce later on. I'm sure Dan the man, the cameraman, will uh, kind of show off that trophy here a little bit as well. So great th that they're here. And, uh, hey, I got to do it. I, it is in the contract. I have to mention Detroit Lions 34, Green Bay Packers 20. It was a tough one on Thursday night all around for the uh, bruised and battered green and gold, right? Fell to their NFC North rivals for the fourth straight time. Lions are getting annoying, aren't they? Uh, Green Bay trailed 27-3 at the half, but closed to within 10 points in the second half to make things interesting uh, before Lions running back David Montgomery. He uh, essentially sealed the victory with that one-yard touchdown run. Well, I think it was about six minutes left in the game. Mini bye week uh, before the actual bye week really comes at a good time. We'll see uh, if the Packers can heal up, be ready to go for that big Monday night showdown next week. Uh, big trip to Las Vegas and a showdown with the Raiders. So, yep, Mad Vince, he's still mad about uh, Thursday night. But you know what? We don't make Vince happy when the guys are here, right? And he's got two football players sitting right over there. First, our co-host is back. It's finally his show for the very first time by himself. It is Green Bay Packers tight end. Josiah Dogora is here. And check out who's hanging out with Josiah. It's one of those rookies. It's fellow tight end Tucker Kraft. He's right over there, too. Hey, uh, first things first, I do want to uh, thank our presenting sponsors, uh, Cellcom and Packerland Home Improvement. First, unlimited data for smartphones is now more affordable than ever at Cellcom with a new unlimited plan option starting as low as $25 per month per line. No matter how many lines you need, Cellcom has you covered. Visit Cellcom.com slash Unlimited Plus for details. And Packerland Home Improvement has delivered superior windows and doors installation service for 50 years. Take advantage of their current special, buy one window or door, Get one 60% off plus 12 months no payments. And check this out. For folks in the audience or uh, watching online, you get an additional $250 off your entire project simply by mentioning Clubhouse Live. How about that, right? So extra savings at Packerland. Packerland Home Improvement, it matters. It's your home. You know what doesn't matter? This next guy, right? This doesn't matter at all, but I am contractually obligated to do this as well. It is when I have to introduce the other member of our Clubhouse Live crew. It is Chicago Bears fan, Ricardo Arguello, everybody. There he is. The, the boos are getting a little weaker, Brett. Uh, <laughs> they, they, that, that's better, Vino. That's Ricardo, good job. I, I thought this was the week I was going to actually uh, congratulate you on your first win of the season, <laughs> but then the fourth quarter happened and it <laughs> unraveled, didn't it? Hey, I was feeling pretty good through three quarters, even three and a half quarters, Brett, and let me tell you, they, they're finding new ways to break my heart. <laughs> they are. They're, they're, they're finding ways. I almost feel kind of bad for you right now. You did? I kind of do. Just a little bit? 
Just not, not much, but just okay. a little bit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been tough. But that just means it'll make it all that much sweeter when they're 13 and 4 at the end of the regular season, oh, Brett. Oh, please. 13, what? You, okay, whatever. Well, I tell you what, uh, get out of your delirium right now and tell everybody how this show works, would you please? First off, we are interactive, so we invite the comments and questions through that live chat. Uh, that can be found online next to our video viewer if you're watching this on your tablet, on your desktop, wherever you're watching it. Just uh, sign in, get those questions over to us. Brett, I'm monitoring this chat. It's already pretty lively, and we'll relay those comments and questions over to you guys. Always is, right? And our chatters come from all over the country, so that's great. Uh, Twitter, or X, whatever we want to call us, I'm at PC Bretzi. He's at uh, Ricardo De Leon. At Josiah D5 for Mr. DeGore, and uh, at Tucker Craft for Mr. Craft. So, and don't forget... As always, please like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash clubhouse live. So, hey, I got the Raiders welcome mat there for the guys that stomp their feet over. It, you know, that's what we do here. We uh, bring out the opposing welcome mat, and I want those guys to kick, show some frustration, right? Get out uh, the anger from the last Thursday's game and take it out on the Raiders, and maybe that'll bring them some good luck as they head down to Sin City. Let's get our co-host to the desk. He's in his fourth NFL season, all with the Packers. He's the old guy in the Packers tight ends room, isn't he? Yes. He does the dirty work. He might have the best beard in the NFL. I, mean, I think that, that is certainly right up there. And he once, you remember, we're trying to find a nickname for this guy. I found out that he once went by the nickname Push to Start. We're going to ask about that here in a little bit. How about Clubhouse, a big Clubhouse Live welcome. There he is. It is the tight end. Number 81, Josiah DeGuara, everybody. <laughs> is back. We didn't chase him away. What's up? What's up? There we go. Let, yeah. One thing, Josiah, after a Packers loss, you probably experienced it. It's like, what is the sky is falling, right? Everybody's yeah, just kind of... Yeah, sky is falling. Right? It's not, it's, not the, it's not the case. It's not the truth, is it? It's just another day. You're two and two, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But I do want a, a, a programming note before we get started. Uh, no show next Monday night because these guys are going to be in Las Vegas playing the Raiders on Monday Night Football. So we are moving next week's show to Tuesday, same place here at the Fox Club, same time, 6.30 p.m. And uh, because then the guys, you gotta, it's a weird schedule right now, but because the guys then will be uh, starting their bye week after next Monday night, they're out of town, they're on vacation, so we will have a very special uh, guest for you. I can tell you that uh, he is a Packers Hall of Famer. He nearly was an MVP at one point. And we will announce who that will be at the end of the show. And for those watching, you have to be here to register and win. We are giving away Miller Lite deck tickets to the Packers-Chargers game on November 19th. We're going to do that next Tuesday night as well. So more to come. How are you doing, Josiah? It's been, it's been, what, three weeks, I think, since you've been here? We didn't chase you away? Yeah, it's been a while. No, I'm great. Glad to be back. Are you, would you think about us a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. I miss yeah. you guys. <laughs> yeah, you did, I'm sure. Well, I appreciate that very much. Uh, so let's do this. Um, the nickname, Josiah, all right? The nickname for you. I'm not sure if we're going to go with push to start for your nickname, your Clubhouse Live nickname, but what was that all about? And, and am, I, am I right? Was that a nickname for you in high school at one point? Yeah, you went way back for, for that. Yes, thank you. But, I mean, it could be a long story, but I'll make it short. But back in the day, I, I played uh, quarterback until, like, middle school or my high school quarterback's on the on the Bengals his name's Jake Browning but anyways I had some arm talent so every once in a while we would play we would put a trick play in for me and I was nicknamed push to start <laughs> because I wouldn't need to warm up and I essentially you know I would just go right in and throw the ball in like 50 60 yards and we we would have a successful trick play so if that makes sense, like push to start, I'm I'm just going right at it right away. I don't love that nickname, but <laughs> I had to, I had to give the story since you brought it up. I did bring it up, and uh, I take great pride in digging deep, Ricardo, for uh, facts uh, about our co-hosts and our guests as well. We'll uh, maybe bring some good stuff up with Tucker as well. But push to start, yeah. Uh, Jake Browning, I think that he 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 equated you to a Prius, right? You just sit there and you push it, and you're <laughs> off and running. Yeah, just call me a Prius. I guess. <laughs> a pri Might the as well. Prius is here it. tonight, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So. Now, you mentioned that. I, I have this as well. Now, we've seen Matt LaFleur at Keyshawn Nixon, our other co-host. He got in an offensive play, ran 11 yards. So he's averaging 11 yards per carry, which is tops in the NFL. One carry, true, but still 11 yards per carry. If we got uh, you on the field for a trick play, how far can you throw a football? How far can you throw it downfield, realistically? 
No, not far anymore with all the wear and tear <laughs> in the NFL. Like 40, 45 yards. That's not bad. But That's not bad. Well, I read this about you too, uh, actually on our own Packers news site. So it said that you actually threw the ball 48 yards. This is in high school while falling away from a defender during one of those trick plays against Oceanside in the Division I State High School Championship game. Ricardo, almost 50 yards, defender closing it and backing up. I think he's being a little bit modest. I bet you you could give Jordan Love a run for his money there. Yeah, probably. But I, uh, <laughs> I love how we're bringing up these, these high school st highlights. We might as well show the highlight tape one day. Might as well go, go back to the glory days. Uh, and I, don't, get those I, shown up. I don't have any clips, so we need to get some clips for, from we'll your coach. We'll get that queued up next time. Is your coach still there? Uh, no, they're not, they're not there anymore, but I still got connections. Oh, I, I, still, I still got the tape. Well, Don't I tell you, tell you what, send it to Mark Mayfield. Mark Mayfield can send it to us, and we, and we can run some stuff here. So well, let's do it. Before, again, we touch briefly on Thursday's game, we're going to kind of call this the, you know, the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. This is like the six degrees of Taylor Swift now. Taylor Swift is a big deal in the NFL. Travis Kelsey, right? Supposedly they're going out. Played at the University of Cincinnati. I, I, so I did Josiah I don't think it's supposedly. I think they are going. Are out. they dating? I yes, don't care. I don't really follow too close. I really couldn't care less. But Josiah went to Cincinnati as well. So he knows Travis Kelsey, who's hanging out with Taylor Swift. There you go. There's the connection. So it's like he's dating Taylor he's Swift. He's like a Swifty already. Yeah. yeah. I'm married, but yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Easy no, now. But, uh, yeah, it's a great look for Cincinnati. I mean, <laughs> go Bearcats. Go, go Bearcats. Uh, have you uh, hit up Travis uh, for any uh, Swifty tickets? Uh, well, what's going on with that? To come. To come for sure. But yeah, it's, bigger than, it's like bigger than the game. So shout out all the, all the Swifties out there, I guess. I guess so. And, uh, and his social media stuff has gone berserk. His jersey sales have has gone berserk. So I guess that's the way to do it. Uh, maybe we can get a little Taylor Swift uh, for Clubhouse Live. So... Josiah, we do have to do this uh, uh, before we get to uh, our first time out in tonight's stat pack. But, uh, Rosie, we do have to talk a little bit about the game. Uh, that is a, a part of uh, the deal here. Can you do, uh, show the, the Clubhouse Live gift of the night there on the screen? Yeah, there he is, Vince Lombardi. You know what he's saying right there, don't you? Everybody has seen that clip. What in the you-know-what is going on out there, right? He's angry. He's still mad, Vince. What did you find in looking at film uh, from, from Thursday? Uh, again, you know, these, these fans, every time there's a loss, they all get skittish, they're, they're ner nervous, they think that that's it, the season's over. But I'm guessing, uh, like we talked with Keyshawn a couple weeks ago, very correctable stuff, and uh, I'm sure you flushed it out and you're ready to move on to uh, the Raiders. So what did, what did you see? What, what did film show you, Josiah? Yeah, obviously you just give credit where credit's due, so credit to the Lions for beating us that night, showed up and played better than we did on pretty much all phases of the ball. Um, but yeah, you just you go in the next day, learn from the film, make corrections. Um, it's a it's a beginning of a long season, so you learn from it, get better like we do each and every week, and uh, we'll move on to the next one. So we're ready to obviously get back at it this next week and and you know get that bad taste out of our mouth. Let's look at it from a positive standpoint. What did you see that was good? What did you see that hey this gives me optimism? You're a young team, young offense, right? So there's going to be some growing pains, I guess, from time to time, but. There had to be some good things that stood out to you too. That thought, okay, yeah, okay, we're we're getting there. We're gonna we're gonna figure this out and, and make yeah, this I work. Yeah, I think I think we just showed a lot of resilience as a young team, as you said. Um, the past couple of weeks, we've had to we've dug ourselves in a deep hole, as we've seen. The first half has not been up to our standard at all. We've you know been down 17 and uh, or 14 and 17 points both after the first half, but we fought back in both games. Obviously, we can't do that time and time again. We we were able to get the W against the Saints, but. Um, Digging yourself in a hole in the NFL, it's not likely to win a lot of games. So we got to stop doing that. But, um, you know, we saw a lot of good things. We're a resilient team. Uh, the second half, you know, brings the best out of us. We just got to start faster. You know, that's the one question everybody has, and I'm sure you guys are trying to figure out too, but why those slow starts? Have you figured that out yet or in, in, in film study and in thinking this little mini bye week and kind of clear your heads a little bit? Have you think, yeah, this is what's the reason for that or that's the reason for this or no way to explain it? We don't know if it's any specific reason, but it, it's just a thing as a team that we got to do. Um, we got to put our best foot on the best foot on the football field, starting from the very beginning. Because, um, like I said, we can't dig ourselves in that deep of a hole e each game. So we just got to start faster, and you know, look back at maybe some some things we did good the the first couple games, and learn from that, and you know, take it into the next week. So, what's the common denominator then for those rallies coming back in the Saints, a big fourth quarter, and then you had a nice second quarter against the Lions. So, what did you see there? that maybe 
could carry over into Vegas and the Broncos after your bye week and beyond? Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, when our, back up, when our backs are up against the wall, we respond pretty well. So I think we just have that mentality from the very beginning. We've got to have the mentality that, you know, we're, our backs are, uh, are up against the wall at all times. And, you know, we've got to go out and start faster. And, and that's something that we know we have to do offensively, defensively, and on special teams as well. What did you do in this little mini-buy? Uh, able to get away a little bit, uh, hopefully, and clear the head? Yeah, I hung around. Uh, me, and my, me and my wife hung around. Uh, didn't do anything. We had some family in town, so showed them around Green Bay first time uh, for a few of my family members. So we just enjoyed it. I like to take this time to relax. I'm, pr I'm a pretty chill dude, so relax, watch the Ryder Cup. Sadly, the year yeah. got a W in the Ryder Cup. Um, but did that and just hung out, spent some time with some teammates and, you know, get your legs back under you. So when you're taking the family on a tour of Titletown, what, what are the stops? What are the key things you have to show everybody? I mean, first you try to get them in the facility. So you show them Lambo <laughs> and you try to um, show them around the facility and things like that. Um, but you gotta, you gotta show them Titletown. Um, obviously when it's really cold, it's cool to see my family's reaction coming from California. Mm. And they see the big hill with all the snow and they're you know, kind of dumbfounded, white Christmas, all that type of stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just, you just take them around because it's such a special place. And it's a, it's a unique place, especially being in the NFL. There's nothing like it, so you just show them around and you know, show how appreciative you are of it. Josiah's trying to sneak in his family, Ricardo, at the facility like at 3 a.m. Uh, you see the th security guard saying, why is Degora clocking in, punching in at 3 a.m. to try to get into the facility? Uh, one more thing, uh, Josiah, uh, the offensive line, right? Man, David Bakhtiari, everybody feels bad. He's our former co-host. We call him Hollywood, right? We love David Bakhtiari. He was so good to us back in 2015. Um, going through some tough stuff with the knee. Elton Jenkins, obviously, with the knee. That's probably maybe a little bit part of the problem, right? To, there, there's been no continuity. And can you just kind of explain to everybody here and watching online? That's, that's tough. It's tough to kind of get that unit to gel when there's instant injuries and you're kind of moving guys around and uh, trying to run an offense at the same time with young guys to boot. Yeah, it's hard, especially in the NFL. Um, but, but as we're all professionals, so being getting injured and um, getting surgery and stuff like that is kind of part of the game. I I, I tore my ACL when I was a rookie, um, but you feel for Dave, you feel for Elgie. You know, ho you know, hopefully get Elgie back pretty soon and see what happens with David. Um, but yeah, it's hard to gel. But that's no excuse for us. You know, anybody in there got to be next to that mentality. Uh, we don't make any excuses, whether it's gelling together, stuff like that. We got to put our best foot on the field um, and our best performance each and every time we go out there. So myself included in the whole offensive line, the whole team, we got to be better. Um, and we'll be the first ones to tell you that. All right. How about how about the Prius tonight? How about push to start getting us off to a great start? What's Ricardo don't laughing at there? It's just Prius. I, I don't know if anyone wants to be we're, compared to a Prius. We're, we're going to figure this no. out. We're going to figure this nickname out. Keyshawn's already calling himself K-9, so we're not allowed to change that. But uh, Let's do tonight's uh, stat pack. Despite the loss, all right, the Packers still own a 103, 76, and 7 mark against the Lions. How about that? Dominating the series. In fact, Green Bay's 103 victories against Detroit are its most against any team in the league. You like that, Mean Gene, don't you? Yes, our unofficial mascot. So the Lions have a long, long, long way uh, before they come close to uh, evening the long time series. Ricardo, uh, we're doing trivia tonight again, aren't we? We are, but we have some ground rules, so please pay attention to this. First off, we will ask the question, and if you think you know the answer, you have to raise your hand. Do not shout it out. You're just helping somebody else possibly win it. And if you're correct, you win what, Brett? Well, we have some nice items from the Timber Rattlers. We have playing cards uh, for the first trivia, and uh, the second trivia question, a T-Rats patriotic cap. Look at that. Uh, that looks pretty good. So that are the, those are the prizes. That's right. And But once you win, though, you're out for the rest of the show, and sorry, live chatters. You have to be here to win. So I'm going to, Josiah kind of gave up the answer to this question right out of the chute, so we'll see if people are paying attention. Uh, we're testing your rec recall again. Uh, in what state did he say Josiah grew up? Oh, straight, straight back there. Yeah, come on up, California. You get the bell. You get the prize for paying attention. Josiah, I'll let you give him those playing cards. He is a Northern California guy, Folsom. Folsom, California, near Sacramento, right? Doesn't uh, Folsom, didn't, didn't Johnny Cash have something to do with Folsom? Yes. What, what, yeah. Oh, yeah, Folsom Prison Blues, baby. Yeah. Yes, sir. Is that still a big deal in, the, in town? Uh, did he, he play to the prison over there, didn't he? Yeah, I think there's a, like a statue of him or something. But it's a big thing. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Sure. I live like five minutes away from the prison. Oh. Up, so, yeah. 
Maybe, no. maybe we but call. It's not, it's, oh, go ahead. It's not how it seems. It's a, you know, it was a nice area. You it's know, it's, a, right. it's <laughs> a nice prison. You know, yeah. it's, it's not a, a, it's a friendly deal. prison. It's, it's no big deal. It's maximum security, like Alcatraz or something. But maybe we should call Josiah the outlaw. Hmm. The outlaw, outlaw from Josie Wales. That's, 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 that's what my what high school coach I used like to call that me one too. a lot better. I know you do too, Josiah. I like cool. that better than yeah. Prius. Yes, sir. Outlaw I like that Josie better than Wales. Prius. Outlaw. I like the outlaw, and that's one of my favorite all-time movies. The outlaw, Josie Wales. It is a great one with Clint Eastwood. Again, dating myself for for sure. But you're any, old. We know. Many times it's on. So, hey, you guys, uh, ready to meet uh, the rookie? You guys want to uh, see this guy? All right. Josiah's guest tonight, he is in his rookie NFL season. He was selected by the Packers in the third round of the 2023 NFL Draft. He has appeared in all four games so far with the Packers on offense and on special teams. He has two catches so far on the season. He played collegiately at South Dakota State, where he appeared in 32 career games, earned all-conference and all-America recognition, finished with 99 career receptions and 1,218 yards, and, if you don't know this, he helped lead the Jackrabbits to the FCS national title last season. How about that? He's a national champion. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Oh, we're not, he's, like, he's anxious to get up here. I love that. I love that he wants to be on the show. Our guest tonight is the pride of Timberlake, South Dakota. He has been called a Goliath. More on that in a bit. But he has also been called a meathead. Did you know that? What? He's been called a meathead, and I'm afraid to ask him about it, but I'm going to anyway because Josiah's in between us, and he can block for me, right? Outlaw on the meathead. Yes. How about a big Clubhouse Live welcome for the rookie? It is number 85. It's the meathead. It's Goliath. It's Tucker Craft, everybody. Come on up. Yes. Should lay off on the meathead there for a little bit, Brad. <laughs> sure he likes uh, that meathead comment, but I'll tell him who said it. It wasn't for me. It was a little bit later uh, in the in this segment. So, but thanks for being here, Tucker. Welcome to Clubhouse Live. Yeah, um, thank you very much. We, it's, it's gonna be fun. Appreciate you being here, but because this is Josiah's show, and you are Josiah's guest, the outlaw insists on asking the first question of the night. Thanks for preparing me for that one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, how old are you, Tucker? <laughs> I am 22 years old. Ooh. 22 years old. So young. So young. So much growing up to do, right? You know, what, you know what's scary, everybody, is my youngest son is 22 years old. My oldest is 28. My youngest is 22. And uh, <laughs> I'm feeling kind of old right now, if, if I have to uh, admit that. So... Well, that's a good question. Let's get this out of the way immediately, Tucker Craft. What is the real Dakota? Is it north or south? Let us know. It is, it is South Dakota. That is the real Dakota. That is the real Dakota. What do you guys think about that? South Dakota wins. Yeah. North high. Dakota is basically Canada, right? North Dakota is Canada. It yeah, is it's Canada. It's like a different country. South Dakota, a lot of beauty. The Black Hills, Waldrug, the Badlands, the Corn Palace. I've been to them all. You've been to them, Ricardo? Not, but I want to. Don't they have Sturgis there, too? Oh, then South Dakota wins for sure. It's a beautiful state. It yeah. really is. It's a beautiful state. So bigger rivalry then uh, for South Dakota State. Is it South Dakota State, South Dakota? South Dakota State, North Dakota State. North Dakota State. There you go, right? Obviously, the Bison versus the Jackrabbits. That was the national championship game last year. I'm trying to think uh, who we've had on from the Bison before. That uh, Who's been on the show from North, North Dakota State? Christian. No, yeah, it's Watson. No. Well, Christian Watson, but there was a uh, uh, Darius. Uh, ah, he's. Uh, we'll come back to it. Billy Turner. Billy, is he a? He's a Bison. Billy Turner. Is that right? Darius. Uh, why am I? Shepard, the wide receiver. Darius Shepard. He played there too. Man, talk about aging, right? I can't even remember stuff anymore. So your Jackrabbits, the defending FCS national champions, Tucker, who beat North Dakota State, ranked number one in the country again. Now, even though you're in the NFL. You're a member of the Green Bay Packers. You now have to wear green and gold, green and yellow, as much as that must pain you because that is the Bison's color. Do you have November 4th circled on your calendar, number one? And number two, what is the bet between you and Christian Watson this year? Uh, we have yet to discuss any um, bet of any sort. It'd probably be an item of clothing. That's probably the easiest thing to do, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll talk about it. 
But November, be sure you uh, talk like this in the mic so everybody can hear. But November 4th, of course, is when you guys take on North Dakota State in uh, Brookings, right? Is that where uh, the, the Jackrabbits are from? Uh, well, when did you know uh, you had the makings of a national championship team last year? I want to kind of go back to the old college days. Was that right away in week one when you pushed Iowa to the very limit? Was a 7-3 game at Kinnick, right? Uh, playing a big, team, big 10 team down to the, to the wire. Yeah, we, um, for several years, we always thought that we had the, the talent for sure. It was just, we just had to make those little changes every single year to get better and better. Um, then we just started setting our goals and preparing as such. Um, so about right when we got into conference play, we're like, I mean, no one, no one was really playing us like that. And I wasn't playing at all because I was, I had ankle surgery. So um, by the time I got back in. We were at the end of conference play, and then uh, we hit playoffs, and we were on a roll. No one could stop us. Right, because you barely beat North Dakota State in the season, and you, you handle it pretty good yep. in the championship game, which I'm sure you let Christian Watson know all about. Uh, I left that stuff behind me, but <laughs> I'll, I'll let him know every once in a while. November 4th, again, uh, keep it on, on your calendar. So let's just get this out of the way right now, uh, Tucker. What is the most ridiculous rookie task requested of you and Luke Musgrave by the grizzled old veteran in your tight end room. What has Josiah DeGora made you guys do as rookies? Not much. Joe's pretty good for us. Um, I got to keep the water stocked and uh, decorate the room. Okay. So Halloween's coming up. It's going to get spooky in there. <laughs> um, uh, me and Luke and the other rookies, we share our task of keeping the room stocked with snacks because Joe gets hangry. <laughs> um, what are the snacks that uh, Josiah must have in Joe the room? Joe likes uh, dried mangoes and mint pretzel, chocolate-covered pretzels. There you go, yeah. That sounds good. Solid. And what about uh, the room decoration? What's that right now? Um, I, I was actually going to swing by Goodwill yesterday and <laughs> go see if they had any, like, leftover skeletons or something, dress the room up, make it look really scary, you know. Josiah, you gotta be a little bit, uh, you gotta be a little bit meaner than this. Uh, as the, as the, as I said, you're you're the grizzled veteran. Now we're starting to call you the outlaw. For heaven's sakes, you gotta give these guys some uh, some tougher tasks. Yeah, we had a nice little rookie dinner, so uh, we did. you know they they paid they paid a pretty penny for it. <laughs> okay. So I'm, I, I'm not all nice, you know. Well, what can you tell us uh, where the rookie dinner was, or is that uh, off limits? Yeah, we'll keep that a secret. But it was it was a good time. It was a good time. We had a, we had fun. So are they? So they're being good rookies. In, in other words, they're, they're doing their jobs. What was the What was the biggest uh, thing for you as so who would have been in your room? I saw it was Mercedes Lewis, Robert Tunyon. Yeah, yeah, Mercedes and and Bobby and Robert Tunyon. Yeah. So that that's why I'm not, honestly not not as hard as them <laughs> on them as you know the O line or the D line is because Mercedes was like a 16 year veteran when I was a rookie. And he, like, he took it so easy on me. So I was like, I'm only in my fourth year. I can't take it too hard. But, and there's three of them. They get to split all the tasks and duties. You know, there's only so much you could do. But they, they do well. They, they keep it stocked with water and, and stuff, like he said. But it's, it's fun to mess around with them sometimes. Maybe when it gets really cold in the wintertime, they can go out and start your car, maybe shovel a little path for you to get out to your car. I'm just giving you some ideas. Don't I'm need just to anymore. We got that I know, <laughs> underground yeah. underground. Oh, you do. Garage. That's yeah, right. We got, the, we got the upgrade at the facility. So that was the, that was the old duty. Mm, maybe at your house they could come shovel you out, snow blow. I'm just trying to think of something yeah. fun for the rookies. Let's brainstorm. Everyone brainstorm for me. What can I make them do for the rest? of the year yeah we'll, we'll you know get like together. make it cheap in the middle of a blizzard right let's get the no snow blowers just uh, some nice little plastic shovels so hey break up tucker would you uh talk about this guy a little bit what does he bring to the room what does he bring to the offense what does he bring to the team i know it's uh, four games in uh, in his brief nfl career but i know uh, hopes are high as well for for both those guys uh, tucker and luke yeah tucker does a great job of coming in every day going to work um he's you know We'll talk about the meathead uh, nickname later, but he's a hard worker, loves, loves to be, you know, one of the first one in. We eat breakfast together every morning because we're one of the first ones in. Um, so we go to work together. Um, it's fun to grind and, and talk about things, but also have a good time when, he, when that time comes. So great dude. And obviously, when he gets his opportunity, he's made the most of them so far. So looking forward to just playing alongside him for the rest of the season. Now, what have you learned from, uh, from the outlaw? Uh, what, what has he taught you? Um, Joe's really taught me just like as a rookie coming into the NFL, like 
how our bodies are our own corporation. You got to learn how to like bring in positive vibes only, and then just kind of let people form their own opinions on you based off the way you play. He's really, really taught me kind of how to look at the game in a different perspective. No, I've heard Tucker call you Joe and JoJo. I mean, am I allowed to call you that too, or is that uh, is that a no go? Call me whatever you want, man. Oh. Your show. That's why you're sh- easy your show. now. Sometimes, your show. I, sometimes I call him Jose. <laughs> Jose, JoJo, Joe. Brett, that sounds like a setup when he says it does, that. Just not, call me whatever you want. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not falling for it. This is a big, strong dude next to me that could break me in half. So, well, you know, it, it's been documented, reported, whatever you want to call it, quite a bit. That Matt Lafleur talking about tight ends. It said it's it's one of the steepest learning curves for anybody offensively, maybe next to the quarterback. So have you found that to be the case uh, as, as you have made that transition or are making that transition? Is, it, is the head still spinning a little bit? Is starting to, things starting to slow down a little bit? Uh, how's that gone for you so far? I'd say I kind of had like my light bulb moment, as you would say, maybe before or right after the Bengals game. Everything kind of just clicked and, and fit together. I can't say I didn't make any mistakes after that moment, but – um, it's still, I mean, every day is a learning process. You're scheming up a new defense every single week. Um, and you're, I mean, you we're getting asked from, from college till now to do things that a lot of us have never done before. Getting a lot more involved in, like, pass protection. Um, like, not just knowing who to block and where to go in the run game, but, like, where, like, the, the shoulder angle of the back and how the old line is counting. Like, it's just a different philosophy. Do you find that too, uh, JoJo, as, as far as uh, learning tight end, uh, the position? Like, when did you feel you had it kind of mastered? Yeah, I still don't have it mastered. No, huh? not at all. Uh, I'm oh. still obviously still working on my yeah. on my game each and every day. Um, but yeah, the tight end position is special because we got to do a little bit of everything. You know, we're receivers, we're O linemen. Yeah. Sometimes we even get the ball in the run game. We got to know pass protection, like the running backs. You know, so we got a lot on our plate. So there's things that we have to we have to do that a lot of other positions don't have to do. Um, but that's what that's why we love it. It's a it's a special position because we get to do a little bit of everything, and you know we enjoy it and obviously make the most of it each and every week. And we try to add as much as we can to this offense um, and make us as as great as we possibly can be. Keeps you involved, right? Uh, you got to know everything and be everywhere, and uh, just very much uh, very similar to the quarterback. So Tucker. Let's talk about uh, Goliath, right? That's what your former college coach, John Stiegelmeyer, am I saying that right? John Stiegelmeyer, he called you as he recalled your high school days uh, back in Timberlake, South Dakota. He said you weren't a man among boys, you were a Goliath among the boys. So uh, were you kind of that, listen, uh, were you kind of that, uh, that, that, that pain in the butt big kid, right, in the youth sports that was just dominating everybody, had everybody angry, all the parents wanted to know, why can't he play at the next level up? How old is he really? What's his birth certificate? What, was, what were you like back in, in high school? Were you a, or a, in, in middle school and in, in, in the youth leagues? Were you just a big menace? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say things really took off for me, like my junior and senior year. So I played nine-man football yeah. in high school and in middle school. So, like, that was all I knew. So I, like, had to learn how to play ball again when I got to college. But... As far as like middle school and high school, like I played running back, quarterback. I didn't play down of tight end in in high school. So, yeah, I mean, you if you like look wanted to like look up the huddle or something, it's it would just be videos of me <laughs> tossing eighth graders around <laughs> as a senior in high school. Just there wasn't there was no such thing as playing up where I live. You just had to get enough kids to play. Period. Right. So. Yeah, so you imagine this kid uh, in, in South Dakota, he's probably bigger, stronger, faster than everybody. The, kid, the parents are just, just angry about this, right? We've got to go against that craft kid again. I'm sick of that guy. I can just hear these parents, especially parents nowadays. Well, let them know how, mo- That's my thing on. Let them know how many uh, kids were in your, or people were in your hometown. Yeah, so my hometown was comprised of about 520 people max. And then um, I graduated 24 kids in my class. Wow. And then the whole school was K through 12. And so the nearest, nearest Walmart is like two hours away. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. One of my buddy's pastures actually like there's, you can drop a pin and it's the furthest point you'll get from many McDonald's in the U.S. Is that right? Wow. Well, there's a fact. Brad, That's a stat pack right there. Brett, if I can interject, he Please. said his town was 500 people in your town. 
the Xavier High School, where our Xavier volleyball team is from, their school enrollment is 460. So that shows just Almost the entire town right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Let's see how close they are to any actual grocery store, though. <laughs> the, term, the term my buddy's pasture just, like, threw me off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, my buddy's pasture, you know, down yonder. Well, 20, uh, 24 and you graduate. We have more than 24 people here. Uh, unbelievable. So, well, actually, I kind of uh, have that a little bit on the notes, but we'll get to that in a second. But here we go. Here's the meathead comment. Your easy, college easy. strength coach. Nate Mole, he called you a meathead because you essentially live in the weight room. Yeah, I mean, I, I care for my body deeply. That's, that's why I'm here now. So in the high school, I was my senior year before football season started. I was 6'4", 245, just was addicted to just being better, a better version of myself every day. And then especially because no other kids in my grade were interested in doing it. Um, so I really like in high school in terms of winning was just a one-man crew. You know, we had some kids who were a little interested, but I, I got better at working out, and then I got better at every other sport. I'm like, oh, that's how that works. Well, that's pretty easy. So I took it to the next level, and college started breaking records in the weight room of college, and then, you know, now being a pro, I realized that I don't have to lift like that anymore. <laughs> um, just maintenance stuff, and then get a nice long off season now, but yeah, just um, just learn how to take care of your body at a young age. It kind of set me up. Is he still the meathead, uh, Jojo? Is, 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 that, is that what he's doing? He's still living in the weight room, or are you kind of calming him down a little bit? He doesn't have to break any Packers records in the weight room. Yeah, it's a battle calming him down a little bit, but uh, he's <laughs> learning. He's learning, but you still, you still got to grind a little bit. So. He's yeah. getting there. Well, Tucker, I don't know if you can tell, but me and Ricardo, we care about our bodies quite a bit, too. Absolutely. We, we, we're working we're body, very long hours on these it's bodies. It's a temple. Study. And, yeah, exactly. I mean, Nutrition is of utmost importance to me. You know, peanut butter Lots cups, Snickers, all that good oh, stuff, yeah. right? You know. We go through a bag of candy like every yeah. couple of days. You should see what happens in the office when we attack that candy bag. But uh, well, take us through the journey. Timberlake, South Dakota, population uh, 500 plus, graduating a class of 24. How did you make that climb from there to being a national champion, champion to being a third round draft pick, to now being a contributing member to the Green Bay Packers? I mean, what an amazing journey it has been. Yeah, it all feels just like like that like it all went by so fast it's actually kind of crazy to think like it does it just seemed like yesterday i was walking to the softball field we don't even have a softball team in, in high school i don't know why we had a softball field but that's where we practice <laughs> we didn't practice our own field <laughs> we're out there we had to mow it on our own um they they would they'd literally be making square bills on the other side of the barbed wire and we'd be practicing but what's a square bale um, square bale is just uh, instead of a hay bale, large hay bale, circular. It's just uh, a rectangle made of hay. Thank you. They do that. Well, that's See, who knows? Like we're we're learning stuff on this show. We so. are. We're learning about uh, yeah. hay bales and stuff. But uh, they do that in Wisconsin uh, dairy farms. So yeah, we see a lot of a lot of square hay bales. Absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, like I said, it's just been it's been fast, and I'm incredibly fortunate. Um, and I, you know, I thank my family and especially. You know, my faith, and, and Joe's helped me out with a lot of that stuff here, that transition here, and, and still, you know, understanding that, that Jesus loves you. Um, but, I, yeah, I attribute a, a lot to that, a lot of that to my, to my success now because just understanding that the, the path that's laid out for you, it's, you know, it's ever-changing. And, um, you know, I'm fortunate to be right here right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so... Again, reading, uh, true or false, you, you kind of considered when you got to South Dakota State, eh, maybe this isn't for me. They might switch me to D-line. You were kind of thinking about that, right? And, but you stuck with it. So how did you persevere? Uh, just take us through that part of the journey. Yeah, I, I got to, um, like I said, I got to college and I had to learn how to play football again. It was just completely different. Everyone's fast. Everyone's good. Everyone's the actual size of, like, a, what they should be, <laughs> not... Like I was, yeah, it's just, it was, it was so different. And um, so yeah, I had to learn how to play ball again. Um, and like just learning how to like see the big picture. I think that's what, that's what took me the longest. Um, it was probably December of my redshirt freshman year that I could hear a play call in the huddle and 
line up correctly and, and run the play. It was it was a lot for me. Um, but you know, I was I was thankful that that was my redshirt year, and then I had another year and a half before I'd ever play my first down again because of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that whole process, um, just kind of finding myself again in the sport that I fell in love with in the first place, um, combining you know with the strength and conditioning aspect, just started to bully people and became a featured part of my college offense. And after that, they they just fed me the rock and I did what I did. And here you are, right? Here, here I am. Here he is, uh, hanging out with the Packers and doing some good stuff and watching him grow. Been good to share the rookie experience with, uh, with Luke. And uh, I suppose yep. you guys feed off each other, push each other, motivate each other, sounding boards for each other. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, coming in here for rookie minicamp and OTAs and him and I and, and some other guys that have kind of rotated in and out now as rookies. Um, but me, Luke, and Henry Pearson, who plays, he plays fullback, um, it all learn the system at the same time. You know, we'd, we'd leave the building 8, 30, 9 o'clock, um, be back. You know, I'd have, Joe and I'd be eating breakfast at 6, 15. Um, so it was, it was a grind for sure, picking it up, but I wasn't alone. So that was the, that was the greatest part is, I know, like I wasn't alone in my own struggle. Couple more things, and uh, then uh, Ricardo, it's your turn for the social media question of the night. Tight end University. Uh, I saw that uh, was it this past summer that you uh, were, were, had attended that. Yes. And uh, you got to hear from your idol Gronk, right? Rob yes. Gronkowski, future Hall of Famer. What was the biggest takeaway uh, from Gronk and uh, the whole tight end University uh, experience? And I'm ask you after he answers if you were ever a uh, part of that as well. Tight end U is really like. In itself, the whole thing's really just like a social cause. Get all the guys who do the same job and, and put them in a room and see how much fun they have kind of thing. <laughs> I had a blast. Uh, but meeting Gronk, like, and then listening to him speak about, you know, yards after catch and the mentality, like, that was everything mm -hmm. that I ever dreamt that experience would be. I, he was, ever since I was a little kid, like, that was the guy that I admired in the NFL. Um, so being able to meet him, um, hang out with him, Listen to him speak, you know, talk about something that I'm very passionate about. Yards after catch, yak, like that mindset. Like that's the reason I'm playing in the NFL is because of the things I did with the ball in my hand and, and listening to with almost the greatest to ever do it, with the greatest to ever do it, like talk about it, it just it like made it really simple. Where where was that held? Um, yeah, at Vanderbilt University. Okay, down there. And then uh, Josiah, you know, it was it was formed I guess in twenty twenty one. Uh, George Kittle. Greg Olson and Travis Kelsey, your Bearcat uh, alum, or, or, or I guess you got to call him that. But did you ever attend a tight end university as well? And what was your experience if you did? Yeah, I went two years ago. I didn't go last year when Tuck went. Um, but yeah, the experience is awesome. Like you said, being able to get all the guys in the league that play tight end together is pretty cool. And I, I knew Travis, obviously, from, uh, from the University of Cincinnati. Um, but to get, to get to hear him talk about uh, the ins and outs of his game and how he kind of attacks the game. Same thing as he said, it's cool to be able to listen to the guys that have done it before you and have been so successful. Um, Kittle and all these other dudes that have, you know, that are big time in the league right now that are making plays um, as we speak. So it's a cool event, but the, the coolest thing is just getting around those guys. Um, it, there's nothing like it that the NFL does. So um, it's pretty special, it's a pretty special time. Was one of the topics of conversation how to hang out with a major recording pop star? Was that, was that, was that one of the tight end university uh, points of discussion? Or I don't know, Tuck, did you talk about that? I, I didn't. Yeah, I, just taking care of your brand, I think, was the, <laughs> that'd be the point of emphasis. <laughs> that would be a good, strong point. I think Travis is doing that uh, as well. Last thing for you, Tucker, uh, finally, and then we'll do our social media question of the night. Uh, there have been a lot, of, a lot of stories out there about you losing your father at the age of 12. And there's a, a tremendous article on, um, where is it here? It's uh, SiouxFallsLive.com. And a great story about you. You sound like a tremendous person. I mean, sound like a great, great guy. And uh, so connected with the community. Football field in Timberlake is named after him, I believe, right? Uh, what did he mean to you as a person and as a player? And how does he still impact you today? Um. It was probably 2019 or 2020. The season had been canceled, and I, you know, I didn't know if I wanted to continue to play football because I, I hadn't played it all yet. Um, didn't really realize what this game would mean to me. And, you know, I, got, I was getting sad, and 
you know, like the one thing I went to college for, other than my education, <laughs> was, was <laughs> you know, it was just kind of taken away from me, and, and I, you know, I felt a little lost, and then I kind of had, like, my own revelation, like, like everything, like, like I said earlier, like everything happens for a reason. You know, like I, I grew up in a, on a farm ranch and realized like if I, if my father was still alive, um, you know, maybe I wouldn't have made it to those extra workouts. Well, not extra, the workouts I did on my own, I guess, but, um, you know, maybe I, I wouldn't have had time to go to this football camp or, or do something else. I'd been, I'd been sitting in a tractor. So um, I, re I realized that for me to be here, that had to happen. Um, and, you know, it took a little accepting, um, like, to, to get over the loss of your best friend. But, you know, like, the, the impact he had on me now is that, like, I realize I'm not just playing this game for myself. Um, you know, I'm playing it to create a legacy for everyone I love, all the people that rely on me. Um, so it's been a journey, for sure. Yeah, how about that? Uh, heck of a journey. <laughs> and the journey's still uh, ongoing for both you guys. Uh, but yeah, Joe, go to uh, SiouxFallsLive.com. It's a beautifully written story and uh, great storytelling by the, uh, the writer. So definitely check it out. Uh, Ricardo, we're doing social media question of the night, right? Yeah, before we continue, Brett, I think uh, Tucker may have played with uh, former Kimberly running back Blair Mulholland when he was a freshman. Does that name ring a bell? He yes. Played, he played for the Jack Rabbits. That's right, yeah. yeah. But Blair was a unit. Yeah. Yes, he was. He was a fantastic athlete here. and uh, He yeah, was part of the 70-game win streak uh, Kimberly team that was uh, setting well, all kinds of records. Ricardo, the way Tucker makes it sound like he by himself could have beaten all 11 guys on the Kimberly football yes, team, the way he was pushing yeah, exactly. and bullying people around back in high school. So I, was, I was playing against a different crop. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do our social media question. That That's I think, right. Uh, so here we go. Here. Brian Linegar on Facebook wants to know, for both of you guys, we know safety is a big issue, so how many different helmets does the NFL give you to choose from for your position, and why did you choose the one that you wear now? Good, good question. We'll start with uh, who wants to go? Oh, every year they come out with, like, a chart that's, like, ranked from uh, – like by player safety. So there's the one I wear, the Speed, speed Flex, like 360. It's fitted specifically to our heads. Um, we even got our own like signature in the back of the helmet on the padding. Like it's, they put you in this like skull cap and they put all these sensors around you before they measure you. So it's, I would say they're pretty safe. Um, of course, that's the first time I've ever been in a fitted helmet. <laughs> We don't really have that amenity at South Dakota State, but. Yeah, they give us probably, there's probably like five or six different helmets the guys in the league are wearing. Um, but yeah, like you said, whatever helmet you choose, they fit it purposely for you. And it's like, it's custom fit for each and every player. So the NFL is really good at, at making that, you know, as safe as possible. And us as tight ends, we wear guardian caps. I don't know if you've seen during practice, it's like these huge padded, things mm -hmm. that go on top of our helmet. So the NFL has ta taken head injuries very seriously, so we're appreciative of that because obviously that'll last us long after we're done playing. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Great question from Brian Linegar for having his question selected. Brian wins a signed photo each week. We'll ask you to submit a question for our co-host or guest that we'll ask live during uh, the show. Look for it again on facebook.com slash clubhouse live. We're gonna take a, another time out. And by the way, uh, stick around, we're, look at this. We're gonna give away this cool Giannis a bobblehead. Bucks have been in the news this week. I don't know if you heard that Damian Lillard is now uh, hanging out with the Milwaukee Bucks, but uh, this is courtesy of our friends, guys, at Bobbles Galore. Uh, Bobbles Galore is your source for the largest selection of bobblehead, bobbleheads you will find anywhere. That includes a great selection of Packers, Brewers, and Bucks bobbleheads. Shop BobblesGalore.com today. We also have Bobbles Galore made a great bobblehead of our, our guy, Mean Gene, that uh, we're going to get here pretty soon. Have those as giveaways as well. Mean Gene. Trivia question number two, Ricardo. That's right. So I need you three out to, to look out in the crowd, see who raises their hand first for this trivia question. Here it goes. Up next for the Packers is a Monday night matchup against the Raiders. The two teams, if you remember this many years ago, hooked up in Super Bowl II. That was a game that saw the Packers prevail 33-14. to In what city was that game played? We got it right here. No, that, that Super Bowl II was not in Oakland. What city was Super Bowl II played? Does anybody know? Right back there? 
Miami is right. Yes. Come on up and get your prize. Yes. I'll let you guys give her the Timber Rattlers cap. That's right, the city of Miami. They played the game in the or Old Orange Bowl. So how about that? Miami and the Old Orange Bowl. Hey, uh, Rosie, we need some music. It is time for tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge. Here we go. This is sponsored by Munoz Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, your center for dental excellence, voted Reader's, best, uh, Reader's Choice, Best Dentist, Best of the Bay in back-to-back -back years. Let Dr. Sebastian and his team of professionals help you achieve your dream smile. Guys, we're going to do a physical challenge today. Let me get the... I got to go under the desk if, you, if you'll just give me a second here. You never know what I'm going to find underneath the desk. There you go. Uh, Josiah, I'm going to give you this green pillowcase. Tucker, you get the wow. gold pillowcase. Josiah, you get a pillow. And Tucker, you get the other pillow. Now listen, everything's clean. Don't worry about it, okay? I would worry about Everything that. Everything is oh, clean. Oh, he's pointing out a stain. That might be some puke or something, so we'll just turn that over. Listen, I got these pillows at, at a discount. They're fine. Everything's fine. Gently these I got at, These I got at Goodwill. The pillows I got somewhere else. Don't worry about it. So here we go. Hey, guys, we're going to call this the Packers Pillow Party. That, that, that's the name of this uh, challenge. Uh, it's a brand new physical challenge for us. Each guy has a pillow. Each guy has a pillow case. One is green. The other is gold, by the way. So the object of the game is simple, right? This is easy. We are asking them to completely stuff their pillow into their pillowcase three different times. All right, you have to put the pillow in the pillowcase, out, in, and then that's it. Three different times. It's like making a bed. That's how it came up to me, Ricardo. I was, I was making my bed yesterday, changing the sheets, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to put these NFL guys to the test. Can I stand? I do change the sheets. Thank you very much. What are you saying here? I'm a very clean, hygienic guy. Why three times instead of... Just one. Because one time is easy. All right, you gotta you gotta kind of move this because plus we got we want we're trying to fill some time too. We we have but it's an hour show. No, not not yet, not yet. So no shen shenanigans. This is not as easy as you think. Now, guys, you're playing for people tonight. You have playing partners. Josiah, your playing partner is Linda. Where's Linda right there, Josiah? And Tucker, uh, who is that again? You are playing for Amber. Yeah, right here. Amber, wave your hand for uh, Tucker. This is what they can win tonight, guys. The winner gets these Packers pennants, mini pennants, courtesy of Shields right down the street. Also a signed photo of the outlaw, JoJo, right here. And a Miller Lite Go Pack Go Can Koozie. That's the winning prize. The runner-up gets everything but the Packers pennants. Okay? That's it. No pressure. You're playing for some prizes for your contestants. Now, I always have to ask, who thinks the outlaw is winning this game tonight? Who thinks the meathead, Goliath, whatever he's known for, is winning tonight? So, Ricardo, I'm going to need your help three times. Three times. You can stand. Absolutely, you can stand. And I'm going to count down how fast can they stuff a pillow in a pillowcase. It's a simple physical challenge. So here we go. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's hear us. Cheer them on, everybody. Oh. All right, okay, that's one for the outlaw, and that's one for Tucker. The outlaw is going for number two. That's it. That's two for JoJo. Tucker's still struggling. One more time, and that is three for the wow. outlaw. I told you it's not as easy as it looks. That's an underrated thing to do, though. That Those is an underrated uh, thing to do, talent. yes. I'm going to make sure I clean that pillow a little bit later on tonight. I'll maybe throw that in the wash. He's staying interfering. Uh, no, easy now. This is this is uh, this is a family show, but uh, it's it's not. Maybe just dropping something. So, all right. So, how about a, a big round of applause for our contestants tonight? Linda, you're going home with all the prizes. Amber, you're still going home with some good stuff as well. Hey, Ricardo, before we get to going, though, we have our, our varsity team of the week. Uh, who do we have again? Yes, we have, if we can get our camera on them, the Xavier Girls Volleyball Team, Division II state champs stand from up. last year. Stand Ladies, up. if you could please stand up and take a bow. Come stand on, up, girls. Yeah. Let me tell you something about these girls, Brett. First off, 
can see that great trophy right over there by Bell. Bell, can you show them? Just kind of, there you go. Showcase it a little bit. Uh, but, Brett, Division II state champs this year, they returned just about everybody from that championship team last year. I think they're 33-3 and three so far this year. They are gunning. They're the number one ranked team in Division II again. Brett, they are on their way to a possible repeat state champ. I'm not at all jinxing you, but they have a great shot at winning it all again, Brett. That's right. So how about the, uh, the state champs, defending state champs, going for a repeat? Xavier girls volleyball team, top ranked. And coached by uh, Coach Drew Harry Drew but he's uh, just kind of in the corner over there, just hanging out. Also the athletic director at the school, he also too. The Very yes, busy athletic guy. director at Xavier. So we w thank you so much, girls, for coming down. All right. So there we go. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. We're winding down, guys. And uh, Tucker, this is where we do it. The first time I'm going to do this this year, we have some, some gifts for the guys, right? Some, some presents, some things for your man cave, right? Some things for the, you have a, do you have a shrine for your, to yourself that you just stare at yourself every night? He does. Yeah, I've seen it. He yeah. does. <laughs> Big fat heads of them, right? Uh, uh, pinned to the, pinned it's to the actually wall. A shri it's a shrine to Joe. <laughs> it's a Josiah shrine. Well, here we go. I got some pictures for you. Put them on the screen, Rosie. Here's the first one of uh, Tucker. Look at that. With the, making the catch, wearing the green and gold. That's for you. And then we always go, uh, we go back to college. Put this one up here. Here, he's wearing his Jackrabbits uniform right there. Look at that making a move. Look at that. So that is for your man cave. And as I always like to say, I look forward, I look forward to the invite to seeing how it looks on your walls. All right? Well, I, like maybe, maybe hang out, you and me can hang out on a Tuesday I'll sometime. take one. Yeah, I'll take one. You're yeah. going to take one? So, yeah. yeah, you bring the ribeye and I'll bring. Uh, yeah, over. I'll bring the I'll bring the meat. We'll we'll, we'll have some uh, some burgers, some brats, some ribeyes, some tenderloin. We'll we'll do it up good, right? Why why number eighty five? And and uh, what was there any significance to that? Um, no, that was just the number I got in college. And then uh, when the Packers called me on draft day, they asked me if I wanted to be number eighty five, and I said, yeah. Why not? It's been good to you. It's been real good to you, and that's how it works. So, uh, Ricardo, we're gonna do a quick audience question. Yeah, well, our guy Steve, uh, Steve, where is he over? He's over there someplace. Uh, Back there over he here. is. Hey, Steve Juno, he wants to know. Listen, we talked about Christian Watson and, and playing in the different Dakotas, but, but he wants to know, are you guys really friends, though? Are you guys still friendly on the team? Is, is, there's no rivalry, right? No, there, there's no individual rivalry between the two of us. No, no hate, no hate. No, Best they of hate friends, each other. right? No demise. <laughs> yeah, they hate, the, they hate each other's guts, <laughs> is what they're trying to say. And by the way, when is your birthday again? Because I think Steve's is the same day. Oh, yeah. There you oh, go. Boy. Coming up. Man. Almost a month from now, yeah. Shout out, Steve. All right, Steve, sit down. Sit down. Well, you guys, you guys played against each other, though, obviously. Yeah, well, I, I didn't. Well, you didn't go against yeah, him, I but didn't yeah. Play against him. But he st stood out as a, as, a, as a collegiate athlete for the Bison, I'm, I'm assuming. Yes. I, I want to say, I, I don't think, in the three years I was there, I think we only shared the field one time with each other. I think he was hurt or something. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. I don't know. All right. We're winding down, and uh, I got to ask the guys. Uh, well, well, for Tucker first, uh, there's a there's a great uh, uh, draft day, draft night video of you getting the call. Getting the call. You're kind of sitting there. I don't know if that is that your girlfriend next to you, and you both are kind of looking at your phones, and all of a sudden <laughs> you have this priceless look on your face, like there it is. There's a number, and you you know it. Uh, so it must have been a 920 area code. And I'm just kind of wondering what that moment was like. You're sharing it with everybody in, in your hometown. And um, just take us through the, the, that, that, that phone call. I mean, there must have been a million things going on in your mind at that point. Yeah, I was just, uh, just sitting there, chilling with everybody <laughs> around me. Um, I started to, like, realize that, uh, you know, it, any, it'd be any pick now. I, mean, I, th I think it was 78. Yeah. Um, and uh, there were still some teams that were right behind. I didn't. I had no idea the Packers were going to call me because they already drafted Luke. Mm -hmm. So um, when I got the, the Green Bay Packers caller ID on my phone, I was like, "No way!" <laughs> that was, yeah. They, but that obviously happened. I'm here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've, like you start crossing teams off your list, kind of when when other tight ends are taken to another place. So that's that was the last thing I expected was was Green Bay. I think the best part of that video is when you get the call and all of a sudden you have the microphone and you say, hey, everybody, be quiet. Yeah. And everybody, this becomes a hush. 
as he's getting the call from the Packers. But yeah. How about you, Josiah? What was that experience like for you, right? I mean, you hear your name, you're watching ESPN, you're watching all the draft coverage, and here you come. Here's your name. Yeah, I mean, it's just a real experience and a, a moment that you'll never forget, surrounded by – mine was during COVID, yeah. so I didn't have as many uh, friends and family around, but I still had a close family around and, you know, a time that I'll always be very appreciative of and obviously blessed to be here. We're going to try to forget about COVID, right, Ricardo? Uh, bad memories of that. So one more thing. Are you guys wearing the same uh, – what, what's going on with your hats here? What, what's unplanned. this all about? Yeah, unplanned. Uh, but it's just – it's a brand. You know, remember Jake Ryan? He used to play yeah. linebacker for the Packers. Sure, he, yep. This is his brand, Hoyga House. Um, so a bunch of guys on the team have different hats that he, uh, he makes now. And obviously him being, a, being an ex-Packer is pretty cool. Um, so he sends guys on the team a bunch of hats every now and then. So, so they're saying, well, what, how do you pronounce it again? Uh, I I'm, I might be butchering it. Hoega? Hoega House? Hoega House. Hoega House. The Danish concept. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Cool hats, though. They are cool yeah, hats. cool hats. You should bring some to Clubhouse Live next time. Yeah, why not? You cool. can wear one. You can match, too. Free I could. Well, yeah. I want to I look like an NFL football player. I could pull that off, right? So, hey, right. how about a, a big round of applause for the guys tonight? Fun show, as always. <laughs> Carter, before we wind, uh, wrap up, we got to go up north. We're picking, uh, we're picking the game, right? Monday night, Vegas, the Sin City. They're going. It to. is. It's in Vegas. Maybe, now, do maybe. we know if Devontae Adams is playing or not? Or how about Jimmy Garoppolo? He's a concussion uh, yeah. issue. Yeah. Well, it, I, I'm, I'm going to assume now. that they're both playing. And if that's the case, the Raiders win, baby. Whoa. Win by ten. Oh. Tucker was looking at you. I think he was thinking. He was thinking back to those uh, those high school days in nine man football. Well, I'm putting the victory visor on. I got to right. Look at this. How's it look? Yes. A lot of questions with the Raiders. Raiders have lost three straight, uh, and that was after barely be beating the uh, lowly Broncos. Um, we'll see what happens, but I, th I think uh, I think I think you're going to get that offense clicking. I think, like you said, you're going to come out with that mentality, like you're down twenty to nothing, right? And you you got to have the the pedal to the metal from the get-go. Aaron Jones, I think, is going to have a big day, find his way into the end zone. Maybe both these guys find their, their way into the end zone, too. How about that? Well, that would be fun. <laughs> and the Raiders, uh, they, well, Khalil Mack had six sacks by himself yesterday, so maybe Rashawn Gary can have four. How about that? So uh, let's go Green Bay 24, Las Vegas 20. I think we'll, it'll be a good competitive game, but the Packers go 3-2. and two, Heading into the bye week. And by the way, can you put a little money on uh, maybe a red five for me? Maybe twenty dollars spot uh, while you're in Vegas. Uh, hit a casino for me. No gambling on team trips. Sorry oh. about that. Uh, Lef no, nobody's gonna know. Nobody's gonna. Know. I'll get. I'll get you twenty dollars after the show. So, Ricardo Packers News app, please. That's right. With exclusive commentary, insider analysis, award-winning photos and videos from USA Today Network, Wisconsin's Packers coverage team. That Packers News app, Brett. That's your one-stop shop for complete coverage of the Green Bay Packers, unlimited digital access to the Packers News app, and PackersNews.com can be yours for as low as 99 cents, Brett, for that first month. Please subscribe because we need that money. We do. It's uh, reasonable. Special thanks again to our sponsors and friends. First, again, our two presenting sponsors, Cellcom and Packerland Home Improvement. We also want to thank our segment sponsors, Bobbles Galore and Munoz Family and Cosmetic Dentistry. And finally, thank you to our supporting sponsors and friends. We have Shields, Escort Limousine Service, Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear, Mayfield Sports Marketing, Mike Thiel and Eric Lives here, Miller Lite, and as always, good folks here with Wisconsin Timber Rattlers and the Fox Club. Again, next show. Tuesday of next week. No show Monday night because of Monday Night Football. We're moving it to Tuesday at 6.30. We're giving away these Miller Lite deck tickets. you got to be here to register to win. Packers Chargers, that's going to be a good game at Lambeau right before Thanksgiving. And next week's guest, next Tuesday night. We are excited, thrilled, can't wait to bring back the Magic Man. Don Mikowski is going to be here. We're going to have some fun with the Magic Man. More on that later on in the week, but uh, Josiah, Jojo, Joseph, the outlaw, right? Push to start. You have the final word tonight. Love you guys and go Pack Go, baby. That's it. There you go. Keep those claps coming for Tucker, for the outlaw, for Ricardo and the crew with USA Today Network Wisconsin. I'm Breck Christofferson saying so long. Be back here next Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. as we celebrate a big Packers victory over the Raiders with the Magic Man, Packers Hall of Fame quarterback, Don Mikowski. In the meantime, Mean Gene, it's your turn. Take it away.